Hi guys, my name's Kelvin. This is the Military Misfit channel. Today I'm going to do a video on the New Zealand crewman's vest. This was a unique piece of gear designed uh, for the New Zealand, Royal New Zealand Armoured Corps. Uh, the idea was that the guys could use them in the confines of like a turret. Obviously working in armoured vehicles it's quite cramped and there's not a lot of space. Uh, but at the same time the guys needed to carry a minimal amount of kit with them. And this was the, the answer to that. It's quite interesting in that um, I don't know of anyone else doing anything like this. Nowadays uh, there's loads of micro chest rigs on the market. But this is kind of like a micro vest. Uh, it's almost as if someone took a, a standard assault vest and then just cut the uh, top part off. So in the late 90s, uh, just in time for uh, operations in East Timor, the New Zealand Army introduced a whole load of uh, load-bearing gear. Uh, new webbing, uh, assault vests, and so on. Uh, prior to that, uh, the gear pretty much being used was uh, based on what was used in Vietnam. Uh, it's kind of updated a little bit from the 1956 pattern stuff to the Alice gear. Uh, tankies would uh, carry all their kit on the outside of the turret, and this was a way for them to actually wear a better kit inside the turret. The Army uh, put out a contract, and it was answered by a company called Motorsports Apparel Limited, uh, based in Levin, which is in the, the lower part of the North Island in New Zealand. They're uh, not used to making military kit, and so when you look at some of the early pattern vests, they've uh, put the um, data lock buckles on wrong. Instead of going through the bar, uh, the attachment point, they've just done it at the back there. But these, uh, these seem quite well put together. The stitching's all good and, uh, and so on, and the materials are good. So it's quite a durable piece of kit. Talking to a few friends that were in the QAMR, the Queen Alexander's Mounted Rifles, uh, they were tasked with the uh, NZ LAV vehicles and so they got uh, a lot of experience on these vests and uh, yeah I was curious as to what they were carrying in them and uh, basically they were saying that um, as you'd expect you have two uh, Stein mags there uh, down the bottom here is a single uh, pistol mag and then up here supposedly these are I think this is a field, first field dressing pocket and then this one over here was a grenade pocket but the guys talked about carrying all kinds of things up here like uh, snacks and uh, smokes and, and what have you. Um, sometimes they'd have an extra pistol magazine and so they would carry that in this zipper pocket here. Uh, it seems most of the guys were carrying the pistol on their waist or maybe on a drop leg. So I posted on one of the uh, New Zealand uh, kit uh, Facebook groups uh, asking about guys experiences with these and I was expecting the responses to be from tankies, but actually um, it was quite interesting. Uh, a bunch of grunts talked about using these on stag in uh, Afghanistan. And when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, in a place like Afghan, you're going to be stagging on from a fixed position, like a sanger or a bunker. It's not like you're out in the jungle uh, harbouring up in a different spot every night. So those would be fixed positions and they'd have weapons in them most likely. Uh, generally speaking either a Jimpy or maybe a 50 cal or GMG depending on what was going on. So it's not like they needed all their kit um, with them all the time. They'd have their personal weapon and uh, a few mags and it'd be plenty. Um, on my last tour in Afghan, the, the first rounds I fired on that tour were from uh, a Jimpy and a Sanger. So it's not like I was even my own, using my own weapon. So. Yeah, it's quite a handy piece of gear, really. Um, another guy, he was a sapper, he talked about using these uh, for search operations, uh, looking for IEDs and uh, booby traps and things. He said that, uh, that it's really handy for we need to get into tight confines and close spaces. So I'm, he might have been on the high research team, I'm not sure about that. Um, I couldn't get any more info out of him. But again, I think it'd be quite handy in that type of situation. You know, basic amount of uh, mags, so for protection and then at the same time you've got some tools and, uh, and so on for it to do your job. Alright so that's a little bit of the history and the use of it and uh, now we'll go through the actual layout. So the front is pretty standard, it's kind of like um, as you might expect off uh, any assault vest, the top half and then down there you probably have uh, some more ammo and utility pouches uh, but on the back of it it's, it's gets a bit interesting. 
we have uh, adjustment here on the side and then here we have some uh, elastic panel so you can sort of see where it gets the name uh, Tanky's bra it's a bit like a sports bra in that in some ways here we have a nice big drag handle quite heavy duty mesh um, this one's a bit worn it so it's got a few holes in it uh, stitching is quite good and it's nice and heavy duty uh, then over here we have a couple of tabs these are probably for the comms cables um, the guys in the vehicles will be using uh, helmets with uh, radios and the intercom system on the vehicle uh, turning it over we have uh, two ammo pouches here so these are quite tight uh, it holds a single mag these would have been designed for the style mag so I think it would have been um, quite a tight fit in there uh, the way they've designed the side of the pouch it comes down quite low so it's not a lot of space um, it, it's not uh, very easy to get the mags out I definitely wouldn't want to be using this for uh, CQB or any kind of like uh, speed reload situation uh, there's no velcro or anything but the pouches are pretty deep so if you didn't have the if you weren't using the fast X clips uh, they'd still be quite secure and then inside the uh, pouch is some uh, plastic thin plastic type material to help protect the Gojira and also just give it some structure uh, the top of the pouch is folded over which is quite good um, because the style mags would have had quite a large hook on the back of them and uh, you wouldn't want that sneaking on things as you're trying to draw the mag out then up here we have a compass pouch or a grenade pouch uh, I've just got a Garmin E-Trex in there uh, over here we have a eyelet for a lanyard point uh, at this time the New Zealand Army it was using I believe it's the K400 which is a South Korean grenade uh, it's a bit smaller than an M26 and uh, that should have fit in there quite well nice and snug then on the other side I think this is a first field dressing pocket and this would take the old style first field dressings remember this gear is introduced in the late 90s so it's kind of before the Israeli dressings and uh, this would have been pretty standard for that time next up we have a zippered utility pouch uh, and today in here I have some uh, med gear is a bit of a tight fit but it will take a uh, tourniquet a chest seal and a six inches ready dressing other gear you could put in there is uh, this here's a helicantex uh, wind runner windbreaker and that will also fit in there quite nicely Just like that. And then down the bottom we have a pistol magazine pouch. Uh, this one here, I have a Surefire G2 flashlight, or it would also take a, a Sears Leatherman Super Tool. Kind of uh, everything you need, nothing you don't, a quite minimalist uh, design. So the front of it closes here with the zip, a uh, decent heavy duty zip and then inside we have two uh, admin pockets really and this one here I have a mat, uh, some guys talked about carrying handguns in here um, and then over here and then in this one here I have a, a notebook and a pen. Both of these pouches or pockets have a section for marker pens so that there would hold uh, three map markers uh, it will take larger pens but it's a bit uh, the elastic's quite tight I don't think you could put uh, a Sinem stick in there um, definitely not a full size one without uh, busting some stitching alright guys that's the New Zealand Armoured Crewman's Vest
but it's quite interesting. Like I said, I, I haven't seen anyone else do anything like this. Uh, people tend to use either chest rigs or full-on vests or, or belt kit, but this is kind of like a half and half. Uh, quite a specialist piece of gear, um, but it did quite well for the guys that used it. Um, they all seemed reasonably positive about it. It is kind of poorly executed, like the magazine pouch could have held things better, but most of the guys were just, just cracked on with it really. Uh, they seemed happy enough with, with what it was and it, it did well on the job it's supposed to. Thanks for watching to the end. Uh, do us a favour and hit the old like and subscribe buttons. And uh, if you can't be safe, be dangerous. Cheers guys.